Hello, and welcome to Biology and the World of Science. Now, all of you have been in some kind of science class before this, uh, whether it's in high school, middle school, elementary, you've all been in science something, and you have a fairly good idea of what science is. So in this video, just to make sure we're on the same page, I'm going to tell you what science means to me. Science. Often, when friends or coworkers are trying to convince me something is true, I will ask if they can provide the science behind that. Science. Now when I ask that, I am requesting three very specific things. Three very specific things that I will be asking you to provide over and over again in this class. One, a clear argument. If I don't understand what your reason for believing something is, then no way am I going to believe it myself because I don't even know what you're asking me to, to believe. Two, I want to know what the evidence is to support your belief. Do you have a credible source? Did you conduct an experiment and can show me the results? Do you have any real data that I can see for myself? Now, data is any kind of information that is difficult for others to disagree with what it says. Uh, for example, if you asked 100 people if they liked ice cream and 88 said that they did, then that is data. No one can disagree that 88 people said that they liked ice cream in that survey. As long as you can prove that you're not lying or making it up, that is data. The final thing I am looking for is your justification of evidence or reasoning. It's not enough to say, I believe this because this happened. That statement lacks your reasoning for the evidence, the connection between your argument and your evidence, you know, that thing that happened. A complete scientific statement with all three components would sound something like this. I believe this is true because this happened, which supports my belief because, and you would finish off the, the argument with whatever your reasoning was, your, your justification for evidence is. Now, to be clear, you don't always have to use those exact specific words, but those three pieces need to be in the arguments that you will be making in this class, arguments that you will be graded for. If you ever need help thinking of how to word your scientific argument, any part, any of the three parts of it, I have many examples posted around the class to help you with your writing, no matter which of those three parts you're trying to build. But why? Why do you have to do all three of those things every single time into such great detail? That's so much work. And yes, yes it is, but that's a skill that you need for the real world because whether you're going to be in a science related career or not you are going to be faced with people that are going to try to convince you that something is true and some of those people are being honest and they're teaching you something that is true and some of them are not but they're very convincing that is what i'm trying to teach you here have you practice here telling the difference between the liars and the fools from the legits. See, legit smart people are smart not because they have bigger brains or because genetically they're just lucky. Nah, it's because they put the time and effort to come prepared. Argument, evidence, reasoning. Liars and fools are missing one or more of those pieces, but everybody got to have a hustle anyways and not everybody cares enough to be legit so when I ask, can you give me science for that? That's code for don't hustle me, bro. So to bring it back to the topic of biology, the specific kind of science we will be spending our time on, we will be studying a number of problems in the world. And these problems have to do with the science of life because that's what biology is, the study of all living things. And what is life? What qualifies as a living thing? Well, it's easy to remember. Just remember that all living things have grace. All living things grow and develop. All living things reproduce and make more of themselves. All living things adapt and adjust to their environment. All living things are made of cells. 
and all living things require sources of energy to survive. Now, what's all this have to do with you and your world? Good question. And here's a quick sneak preview of some of the things, some of the problems that have to do with biology that we're going to be trying to tackle in this class. <laughs> And there's so much more than that, but that's enough for now, and this video is already getting way longer than I want it to be for an introduction video, so hang on tight, and I'll see you in class.